Welcome to D-Lab. I have another tech tip for you. This time we're going to talk about input sensitivity on guitar amps. So as you know I've been working on that Harmony 415 amplifier. It was really noisy. I have that solved. But the owner told me one thing that she really liked about the amp is the fact that you could crank it up full bore and it wouldn't distort. I thought that's kind of funny. And then later on we talked and she said, you know, I would really like to have more of a Fenderish sound to the amp. So I thought, well, maybe I should investigate the input circuitry and see what Harmony did versus Fender. So I suspect the input to this amp is somewhat attenuated from what she's telling me because I've already verified these tubes and they're working like 90%. They are in primo condition. So it's not a gain issue with the tubes, right? So I thought, well, what the heck, let's check the input resistance. So here we are, channel one. See, we got about 135K. If you were to do that same check on a fender, you'd see well over one mega ohm. So yeah, we've got low resistance that's pulling that signal to ground. Let's take a look at the schematic and determine why. So let's do a quick comparison on the input circuitry to the Harmony 415 versus a typical Fender, say, Princeton input, okay? So both of them use a 12AX7 tube. So here's half of that input tube, here's the other half. We're gonna concentrate on channel one, okay? So J1 and J2 are actually channel one. They come through the 68K resistors, which are your grid blockers, and they go to the 12AX7 tube. Now take a look here, you see this 390K resistor? That is the grid loading resistor. Normally you would see about one mega ohm. However, if you take a look at the R1 and R2, your input comes in, goes through those resistors, through J2, and actually go to ground. So that 390K resistor is kind of along for the ride because those two 68K resistors are loading that input down and that is why you have low sensitivity. Let's take a look at a typical Princeton input for a comparison. So here is a Fender Princeton input. Same deal. You see the two 68K resistors. However, you do not see another resistor from pin 2 to ground, do you? You see this one meg though. So if you were, say, plug into channel 1, it would lift the ground. You would see one meg to ground along with the 68K loading the grid of the 12AX7. So the input of this would be much higher. It would be over one meg, and you get much more sensitivity out of the input of that tube. So let's take a look at this on a scope. I'll inject a signal, and let's see if what I think is happening is true. So it's pretty obvious why that input sensitivity is not what you would expect. And I don't expect the harmony to sound like a Fender, okay? That was the design. It's not flawed, it's just what they did. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna rewire those input jacks just like Fender did on the Princeton, okay? To bring that sensitivity up. And then, if you take a look at the schematic here, you also see there's a 100 picofarad cap from that grid to ground. That's gonna go, and we're gonna add like a 25 microfarad cap from the cathode to ground, like Fender has, to enhance mid-ranges. Then, channel two, we're gonna actually attenuate that more because she wants an MP3 input. So I'm gonna put like a 10 to one ratio on the input so that she can drive it with a two volt signal off her MP3 player, and then we don't have to add additional jacks for that feature. How cool is that? All right, before I touch the amp, let's get a baseline, all right? So I have an audio generator set at about 1,000 hertz. We're going to the input on channel one, monitoring on the scope. The D-Lab audio test set is providing a load in the interface to the scope. So I'm simply going to advance the volume to five. And there is our signal, okay? Let me take her down so we can get something reasonable. So we see approximately three divisions. Okay, so we've got three divisions on the scope. So I'm going to leave the test equipment set the way it is. We're going to make the changes. We'll come back in and check that amplitude and see if we have more gain.
than what we initially started with. All right, so remember, we're only going to modify channel 1 for the increased gain. Channel 2 will later be modified for an MP3 input. So this is 1. Here's the two 68K resistors. Follow this little green wire, goes to the 12AX7. There's the 100 puff cap. Here is the cathode resistor with a 1.5K. I'm going to add a 25 microfarad cap electrolytic across that. And then we'll retest and see what that does to the game. The modification is complete. Here is that 100 puff cap and the old 390 ohm resistor that's been pulled. Now the resistors are on the back of the Switchcraft jacks, just like Fender does. All right, so we're powered up, same setup, haven't touched anything. I'm going to take our control to five. Remember, we had three divisions on the scope. So here we go. Bring her up. There's five. Look at that. She's off the screen. Okay, I have not touched the amplitude knob on the scope. So we've got like a megaton of gain. So let's check that resistance now on the input jack. Remember, we had about 135K before. And now. See, I'm on the 200K scale and it's over scale, right? So let's go to 2 meg now. Look at there. Just under a meg ohm. Exactly what you would see on a fender. So we solved the sensitivity issue on channel 1. Now it's time to desensitize channel 2. So I'm going to add some attenuation so that we can run an MP3 input without overdriving that channel of the amp. So you can play your MP3 on one channel and play your guitar on the other. Here we go. So we're good to go on channel one. Now channel two, I'm gonna set up just a 10 to one attenuator, okay? So currently, we still have those 68K resistors and then they go, obviously, to the grid of the other side of the 12AX7 and there is a 2.7 meg resistor from that to ground. So what the plan is, is we're going to reverse this. I'm actually going to put 100K to ground off the grid, and then I'm going to change these guys out with one meg resistors. So we can get approximately a 10 to 1 ratio. Then I'll hook up the MP3, see if it works. All right, channel 2 modification is complete. Same deal. Instead of 68Ks going to the grids, now it's one megs with 100K to ground. So if you measure from ground to here, that is what the 12AX7 is seeing now, just under 100K ohms. So that's going to attenuate the input. If you pull this out, it does like a normal amp and it shorts that input so you won't have noise on channel 2 when you're not using it. Okay. So let's hook up my MP3 player. I'll fire this thing up. We'll see what it sounds like. I got my MP3 hooked up. I'm about half volume, so that's probably injecting about a volt output to the input of channel 2. You can see I got all kinds of volume. There's the tone. Now I'm not going to leave it going long because I'll get zapped for copyright, but you get the idea. It works well. So it's just a couple resistors and you can add an MP3 input to your amp no holes required, guys. You can just use that channel that you're not using otherwise, and this can be done on any amp. So here's a close-up of the final design of the input jacks on the Harmony 415. Channel 1, we have turned that into a typical Fender input. So this is textbook. If you looked up a Deluxe or a Princeton, this is what you would see, okay? So you got the 268Ks that come over here and feed the grid of this side of the 12AX7. It's got the 1.5K resistor and the 25 microfarad cap to ground. Typical, all right? Channel two now is different. We modified that for MP3. So if you look here, you're gonna see 200K resistors. Those are strapped from the inputs to ground to load the MP3 output to make it happy, okay? Then you see the two one meg resistors and they join together. So if you had a stereo input, this would equalize that, okay? And you come into this point as a mono signal that goes direct to the grid of the 12AX7. 
So there is a nifty tech tip for you to either increase or decrease gain on those input channels of your amplifier to gain capabilities that it doesn't currently have. So if you want an MP3 player, there's no kits required guys, no holes to drill. Just change some resistors. And if later on you say, you know, I need to put it back to original because I'm going to sell it or something, put the old parts back in. No harm done. In this case, now this amp has the Fender input and an MP3 input. Very usable if you're playing in a band. So that's what I'm here for. Tech tips from D-Lab Electronics. We'll see you again.